Hello you lovely lot and welcome to a brand new video. My name is Katie and yes, I'm sure you've gathered we're going to be unboxing and creating with the June Upcrate. Now I'm sure you know how these art subscription boxes go. We get a nice little print and this month's featured artist is Lisa Tegtemir. I can't pronounce it but I like their style. We also get some stickers made by the featured artist, a magazine, as well as some delightful arty supply ingredients to play with. So let's have a quick rundown. So we have a Art Space pigment brush liner. It's kind of got like a Japan nib to it, if you know what one of those is. I'll show you when I swatch them. We also have some Karen Deco brush pigment pens. Well, I think they're more like the paint pens, but again, let's wait for the swatching. We also have a Brunzeal 3H pencil, a Milan eraser, which is a 430, whatever that means, and a acrylic drawing pad, A5, and there are eight sheets in there. So on first impression, not a huge amount of stuff. However, if you've been a long time viewer of this channel, as well as watching other art channels on YouTube, you'll know that when they've had these deco brushes before, they've always been very welcomed, that they are a nice, nice supply to have of course let's not forget the bottle post magazine as well where there's information about the supplies hints on how to use them as well as interviews with the featured artists and competition winners but you know i'm sure you've read yours let's dive into the swatching though shall we so for the Karen markers, I, th I think they're, they're an acrylic based marker, I've definitely featured them before on the channel. We have a pink, we have an orange red, we have a mango and we also have one and I love the name for this, it is just curry which is sort of like a very olivey browny green colour. I mean all in all it's quite an interesting palette we've got to work with, I'm not going to say it doesn't work though, I'm just going to say the old grey matter did have to work. Uh, put a little bit of a shift in to try and figure out what to do. Of course, the pencil does what a pencil does. However, I actually quite liked this liner pen. It was a bit, it was a bit weird. It wasn't like a lot of the other Japan nibs I've used before. And that's the only way I can describe them. They're like a very long brush nib, but it's not a bristly brush nib. It's like a flexible tip. And a lot of other branded pens I've used before when they've got a pen in there like that, usually call it a Japan nib. So, you know, that's what I'm going to go with. But I quite liked using that. It had quite a nice flow to it. So, yeah, I was, I was, it was impressed. Well done, Upcrate. This month's prompt is be bold. And, well, with this array of supplies, I think you haven't really got much choice. You're going to be bold with it anyway. So I kind of just went with whatever I wanted to draw on this one. I thought I'd be able to create some interesting mark making with these pens, which I probably haven't explored before when I've used these supplies in previous videos. So I went for a bit of a folksy theme here. And of course, with those oranges and reds that we had, I, I was definitely getting fox vibes. So I thought I'd paint slash draw a folksy fox. And I quite like how it turned out, but I will go through this as I go along. I used the orange red for the main body of the fox and then that mango colour was just really nice to add a bit of variation in there and just a little bit extra shape and tonal differences, you know. I do quite like using these though, they're quite an interesting kind of juicy acrylic mark. They're not quite like a Posca, you don't have to keep pumping them all the time and you don't have to worry about a big glob of paint just pooling all over your page. It is recommended you give them a shake though before using them, obviously to mix all the binders and pigments together, as well as getting that ink flowing through that fibrous tip there. They are not quite as opaque as a Posca, however, once you've let a layer dry, you can go over it again and you're looking good. And they do have a decent enough opacity to them to at least do a couple of coats and, and you'll be fine, you'll be fine. As well as if you're going over areas in a lighter colour, it'll stand out. So they're pretty versatile. The paper we got is a textured paper, so it's sort of got a canvas texture to it. And although it worked very nicely with these markers, I'm personally not a fan of that type of paper. 
for me, especially when I am using these markers, and I did say they worked nicely with it, but it is not my preferred way. I want my paper to be smooth. I don't want to be feeling all of that texture there. And although it didn't interrupt with the visual process, the actual creating process, oh, you know, you, you get the feedback of the texture of the paper and that's, that's just not what I wanted. And maybe I'm just being a little bit pernickety there and it is just a preference. As you'll see now, I'm adding some lovely floral details to the fox and I'm doing that just by dabbing these nibs. They're absolutely fabulous for making these kinds of marks and yeah, I, I quite enjoyed this process. I think I probably went a little bit too far, but what the heck, I enjoyed it. And as you can see, I didn't have to go over the lighter colours really more than once. I know they are a little bit semi-opaque but it doesn't really interfere with the picture at all so I was quite happy with that. After everything had thoroughly dried down it was time to start adding some of the black details in there and this is where this liner pen shone for me. It just worked really nicely. You could do some really fine lines if you wanted to, but I wanted some chunky thick lines and this pen allowed me to do that. As well, the nib was really good and flexible, but it wasn't too bendy to the point where there wasn't much control. It, it, was, it was pretty good actually, I, I quite liked it. Can't you tell? I did think there might be a couple of issues, especially when I went over the areas where that acrylic ink had gone down, just with the drying and everything like that, but no, it 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 just behaved how it did on the paper. Obviously, make sure everything's dry before you add any more colours or run your hands over it. Put your hands up if you've thought a piece was dry, run your hand over it and it's smudged. Been there plenty of times. I was a little tempted to try and add some of those floral details using the black but I also thought at the same time I don't think that's going to be a great fit so I just added some more of the coloured flowers on there and it, I liked how it turned out. It was, it was simple, it was fun and yeah I was quite happy with the process here. So whilst that's going on in the background I'm just going to fill you in on the schedule ahead. So. If you'd watched my last video, and if not, I definitely recommend you do, I've started doing some lino printing. Don't know why, it just seems to be the latest obsession, so I'm just going to go along with it for a while, and obviously I'll take you guys on that journey. I've been working on some more complicated designs, and I do intend on revisiting a few older pieces too. Also, I've got the May Scroll Box Beyond the Box coming up, so be sure to keep an eye out for that. And whilst we have a pause in the blistering hot weather that has been in the UK recently, I'm going to do another gouache dragon, so definitely be sure to keep an eye out on that too. And speaking of gouache dragons, I might do a bit of a roundup video as to all the different ones we've tried. Let me know if you'd want to see that, just see a side by side of all of them in one video. I think it might just be interesting to compare all the different ones I've tried so far and obviously that will be a nice little midpoint for that little journey we're going on right now. But anyway, let's get back to the picture in hand. So for the background, I'm sure you'll seen, I used that curry green colour to add some, I guess, grass and vines in there and just extended those floral patterns to the top of them. And then I I really just like the simplicity of this. I didn't fancy doing anything overly complicated. I'd literally just got back from Paris when I picked this up. So I just wanted it to be chill. And yeah, I was really happy with how it came out. I think I even might put that on my own wall. Anyway, the only time I used this eraser was just to remove some of the pencil areas that were peeping through on the white. And that was pretty much it. Let me know down below what you thought of this box and obviously what you thought of what I did with this box. Did I think it was an amazing box? Not hugely, but I didn't think it was a bad box either. I had a lot of fun with it. I liked the supplies that came in there, even the paper. So I can't grumble. So you've not done bad on this one upgrade. Of course, I would like to say a massive thank you for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you found it helpful as well, just in case you've been struggling with this box. Also, I'm getting very close to 3000 subscribers. So if you are a long time lurker and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, why not give it a quick click now? Or a couple of the videos that are on there. I don't mind. Anyway, you lovely lot, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.